You are listening to the MVP Podcast. Well, welcome everyone to another episode of Talking Tech. My name's Danny, and during these episodes, we are going to be discussing indie tech and how to apply it. This specific episode, though, is going to be a little different. Uh, I always have a recording, so you guys can go ahead and watch this on YouTube. Um, But we are not going to be demonstrating a a specific product today. Um, Instead, this is going to be more of a conversation. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, introduce my guest here. But today... We have on someone who I was introduced to through Kyle Kemp, and he said these words exactly, okay? You have to get this guy on your podcast. I've never met anyone more thoughtful, the good that he does for his agents, which I I mean that, you know, someone who... I, I don't know Kyle too well, <laughs> but, you know, him saying that out of the blue to me, I mean, was says volume, dude, uh, Jerry. But he started an aggregator named Voldico, and um, I can attest through our convo that we had prior to this that he truly wants to better this industry and, and better people's lives. But uh, well, nice to meet you, Mr. Uh, Jerry Volmer. How you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Yeah. This is a good time, man. I, I and I uh when Kyle had mess messaged me that, uh, I mean, that was amazing. And seriously, our conversation before, you know, how we're gonna tailor this to, you know, younger agencies. Um, you know, it, it it's good to see someone out there that truly wants the the best for others. It really is. But uh nice. but what's up in your world, man? Well, we just uh, we got a lot of things going, a lot of irons in the fire. We uh, uh, we're in super growth mode right now, and heck yeah, and got a lot of things going on. It's it's a great year, and uh, we're we're looking to do. We've had some great things happen for us, but we're looking forward to the future and and what the industry has to offer for for individuals that are interested in it. Really, yeah, love it, man. Heck oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, now I know we were chatting before this, Jerry. What's uh, your background there? What What is that of? <laughs> oh, well, I'm in the boardroom, and uh, <laughs> on the back wall here, we have a map of the United States. So it's always been sort of a, a fun thing that we do. We we found this map that went on the wall, and then we uh, we every time we go into a state and we have boots on the ground, we 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 have these acrylic states that we order and then we put those on, on the, the map so that it shows that we're, we're out there expanding and moving into other parts of the United States. So that's Heck just yeah. sort of a fun thing that we have here. That <laughs> no, it's fun. Looking at. Uh, it's back, fun. back in the day um, at my uh, role at agency zoom, uh, anytime we uh, book the demonstration, we like, we had a little popper. <laughs> it was like a yeah. party popper. Oh yeah. So we'd go over, grab it, and we'd pull it in a little party pop. That was back in my starter uh sales days. <laughs> so you literally shot the little streamers out and everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was that's fun. Cool. That's yeah. Cool. I, I look back at that now and I'm like, man, I need more of that fun in my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anytime I set a demo or something. But uh but all right, well, let's get into this. Um Guys, reminder, this is going to be more of a conversation today with Jerry. Um, And and Jerry, I I know I'd reach out to you prior about giving us a couple points. Mm -hmm. Um, And typically, I like to tell our listeners what they're going to get out of this today. So uh, can you go ahead and just walk us through those three points you brought up? Yeah. Yeah, we can give you a a rundown. We, uh, you know, I, I truly feel that the insurance industry is one of the best kept secrets from young people yeah. uh, that are looking to get into a career. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit. And then uh, mm-hmm. I'd like to share with people, uh, the individuals, how they can create a very nice lifestyle in the, okay. in the insurance business. And then, and then uh, all the way up through where, where they retire and, and the benefits of what this industry can do for, 
individual in retirement years. So there's that's a few things that, you know, I thought maybe we could share with individuals and, yeah. and take them one at a time and go through them. And if you don't mind, Jerry, you know, I, I do this, um, you know, podcast to bring awareness as well through technology, right? Mm-hmm. And as um, each and every year comes on, technology becomes more and more important. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, uh, I'll ask a, a couple of questions here and there, <laughs> just based yeah. off your experience and what you're seeing with, um, you know, the younger agents you're bringing on. So, uh, and before that, I want to get in your background because, you know, you started uh, Voldeco, right? And um, yeah. I think the listeners need to know your passion. Uh, so let's walk through just a little bit of your background. So just, okay. uh, you know, why'd you even get into insurance? Yeah, well, I was uh, 18 years old in high school, 1977. And mm-hmm. I, uh, I had just purchased a car and, and I, w- I grew up a farmer. I grew up a farmer, still uh-huh. am a farmer. And, okay. and so uh, I uh, needed to afford this car because the farming was seasonal and everything. And and so I got into the insurance business, just kind of right there during my high school year, my senior year, I I went through class the week before I turned 18, which was in March of 77. Mm-hmm. And the week after that, I was, I was uh, offering stock in a uh, life insurance company that was starting up. That's and cool. by that fall, the money was raised and I started selling life insurance in November of 1977. And that was the beginning of my career in the insurance business. And from there, it evolved. And I got into crop insurance business a couple of years later. And then a few years later after that, I got into the property casualty business. Yeah. And from from there, I uh, I worked uh, building the agency. We got up to got up to six locations and and I remember putting the first file in the file drawer. I started down <laughs> the little bitty room right downtown here, just about three blocks from where I'm at right now. And wow. And, and uh I remember getting appointed. It was tough to get carriers then. Nothing yeah. like it is today, but it was even tough then to be a new agency startup. But I remember putting the first file in the file drawer and I remember the first claim I had, how nervous I was hoping it would all work. And <laughs> And uh, it did. And from there, it just kind of took off. And and I uh, still represent that same company today in, okay. in the insurance industry. That was a company called Indi- Indiana Farmers Mutual out of Indianapolis. Okay. And we still represent them. So so uh, we have a great relationship with them and, and everything worked out. I uh, went from then, it was 2001. Uh-huh. Uh, I had talked to my children and they said they didn't want to be in the insurance business. Well, then I went and I sold the agency to uh, a bank and uh, about a $3 billion bank. And I went there to be the CEO of the insurance division. And lo and behold, within 10 years, both of my children were working for us in that agency. (laughs) And so one day I said, well, if you're going to be in the business, I said, uh, we, we need to see about going back out on our own. So then uh, I ended up buying the, entire insurance division back from that bank and we formed Valdico and and we've been taken off ever since that was 14 years ago that's so, awesome wow yeah. it, that's so funny too um <laughs> how they weren't in the business and they're like you know what uh we probably should get into this <laughs> yep yep it, was- it, it happens that way a lot in in the insurance <laughs> business that that's kind of funny how people end up in it was that you like nudging them every time you'd see each other? You're like, hey, you, you know, you probably should get over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's they, happening? Uh, they eventually, as they got out and started working, they they kind of realized that, hey, maybe maybe it wasn't too bad. And, <laughs> and so they both ended up coming back and, and they work with me today. We're all in here together and we're family awesome. owned and run. And it, yeah, uh, it's. I, I see them every day. It's a great thing. I see them every day. That's awesome. And and, you, I, and I can tell, like, you know, from my previous conversations, Kyle and you, that you you really do care. So, I, you know, you even talking about that, I can feel uh, uh, that emotion off you. But uh, so you started Valdico. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of walk walk me through a little bit that model here today. Why, like, why'd you you know, want to become more of a network here? 
Well, when uh, when we when I was uh, working in the agency at the bank, uh-huh. I ended up I centralized everything. I okay. centralized all the backroom operations. You don't need operations in an agency. You need you need advisors and people who can educate people about insurance. So centralized right. everything into one location, mm-hmm. and and had nothing but sales and service people out in the public. Mm-hmm. So what we did was we created the efficiencies centrally and we diversified our people so that instead of having one person in every office that that does multiple tasks, you bring that down and each person does one task and they become very good, very efficient. And, yeah. you, and, and, and so you move more efficiently, less cost because you've got people specializing in every segment of the operational support. Right. And so starting an agency from scratch, I knew what, how hard it was to, yeah. to uh, get carriers. And then the second thing was you're in the business to uh, take care of the customers. Well, right. pretty soon after you get so many customers, you start getting pulled away because now you got to hire people. You got to train people. You got to right. do payrolls. You got to pay the bills. And so all this yeah. other stuff that, that comes into play bogs you down from what you got into the industry to do yourself. So that's how we formed Valdico. Valdico basically is a centralized support group here mm-hmm. in my hometown that takes care of agencies wherever they're at. So an agency owner, someone brand new can get into the insurance business and they don't know how to, they don't have to know how to run the agency. We run it all for them and they own it a hundred percent. And then they learn through association and through our training, how to uh, become uh, the agency owner and how to operate it. Because in the industry today, I feel it's important to bring new people in because in the industry today, yeah. so many agencies are getting bought up like any right. industry the right. bigger companies are buying up the smaller ones and, and, and it's hard, it's hard to get started anymore. Right. So knowing what it was to get started in the insurance business, I thought, you know what? I made it through. I'm going to yeah. help other people make it through. So that's why we created this model so that people who maybe don't understand or know how the insurance industry works, we help them. No, yeah. that, I mean, that's wonderful. I, um, you know, going back to your kids being brought in into insurance, right? Mm-hmm. I personally believe that we keep needing to push uh, other people outside that this is a good industry. It is uh, a best kept secret. It really yes. is. I, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I fell into this industry because I was looking for sales experience. Yep. Yep. <laughs> And I, uh, I took a leap of faith for an uh, in, insure tech startup. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I realized working with agents that I'm like, wow, I mean, you know, there really is an opportunity to make a lot of money. And, you know, the average kid coming out of college has no idea. No, they Unless, don't. Unless, you know, they have a family member who is in insurance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, that's that's really, fair. yeah, that's really the only thing. Um, yeah. So let, let's tailor that in. Insurance is one of the best kept secrets from young people. Like, you know, talk to us a little bit about how you, you know, might get younger people in the industry. Are you you doing mm-hmm. anything today to do that? Oh, yeah. 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 You know, m- most young people, when they come out of high school, they go to college and they have they have plans. Yeah. But a lot of the plans don't include getting into the insurance industry. They're always, they're always uh, kind of directed to go in, in other, other industries. Yeah. But it's, it, we always joke when we work with carriers and other agents, and very few people, if you're in a room, a large room of people who are in the insurance industry and you ask any of them, were your plans to get into the insurance industry? And they'll <laughs> say, not a hand goes up in the room. Right. They yeah. all kind of say, well, no, I come out and I wouldn't, didn't end up doing what I uh, thought I would. And, yeah. and so uh, somebody talked to me or directed me this, this way. And that's how I got into the industry. And, and so it is, it is sort of one of the best kept secrets because 
I don't know of anybody who eventually gets into it that gets out of it. That's the thing. <laughs> That's true. I yeah. haven't heard of anyone who goes to another industry. Yeah. You yeah. You'll have people that will leave other professions and industries to get into it, but very yeah. seldom do you hear of somebody who, once they get into the insurance business, gets back out of it. They usually end up staying there because if it's if it fits what they want to do, right. they're in. They're in. So um, it's it's really there are a few programs out there in in the uh, educational institutes that that do educate people on insurance a little bit. But there there's few. There's not a lot of them, but there's few. But there's a lot of programs for other things, you know, but not as many for the insurance industry. So I truly do feel it is one of the best kept secrets because nobody really talks about it. They kind of happened into it by accident. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, you know, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of people uh, build a successful career, um, have a great lifestyle. My, um, my wife's a neighbor (laughs) back in uh, Westlake, Ohio, um, independent run agency. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, they retired when they were 45. Sure. They sold sure. it to someone else and, you know, they own the land. So they basically just get, you know, the, um, uh, the, now the new owners are just paying them all the time, but Hey, they got out when they were 45 and ever since then they've, they've lived a great life. Right. And because right. they own the land, they're getting some residual every single month. That's right. Yep. That's and- right. I, I, uh, I, I can remember back, and and this goes for anyone who ends up getting into the industry. I remember when yeah. when I was just running the agency by myself, um, I had freedom. You yeah. know, uh, I mean, how many how many jobs can you have, or careers can you have, where you just have total freedom and you can come and go as yeah. as needed? Now you're always you're always accessible for your customers through phone calls or whatever. But if you needed to take off, I don't think I ever missed a sporting program that one of my children w- were in. Wow. Yeah. I was, I was able wow. to take off and see all of them. I never had to say, well, I got to go to work and I won't be here or anything like that. It just, it creates a lifestyle where you have freedom and, and you're not really uh, you're, you're committed to what you're doing, but your, your time is not totally committed to where you can't do other things. So I just think it's a great vehicle yeah. for young people. And a lot of people don't think about down the road, you know, when you're coming out of college or whatever, you don't necessarily think about when you're going to be 35 and you've got children and, and everything yeah. and all those other things that come into play, right. but they do, they do come into play. And, and in this industry, you can create a beautiful lifestyle take your vacations when you want. <laughs> you don't yeah. have to. You can, you know, I mean, you can work remote nowadays. Yes, like, you can. You, you can. really can. Nowadays, mm-hmm. technology, you can be anywhere. Um, exactly. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you know, Jerry, like it, it, before it was brick and mortar, right? People walk yes, in. Mm-hmm. Um, but now the technology is so good that people can, you know, do some self-service capabilities themselves. They don't need to reach yes. out. Yep. Um, we- we have agents that are uh, able to uh, work from home. Yeah. They don't have bricks and mortar and we're doing their operational support for them. And, and they're, they're doing two, three hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. And, and they're just working out home. Yeah. I mean, that's huge. Like um, why I've always asked myself this question, you know, I'm an, I'm a new agent, you know, why wouldn't I, want to join a network in the beginning like why like you know i'm sure you get that you know sometimes like why like why wouldn't i yeah well there's there's really no reason why you wouldn't uh yeah i mean that's what i was thinking (laughs) yeah that's what i've been thinking from what you've been telling me in today's industry it's so difficult to get into the business that most people have to go through a network to be able to even get carriers and things like that. Yeah. Um, the it, it's so funny how how times change because 30, 40 years ago, back when I was getting into the business, what we do today was not acceptable. 
because the carriers wanted to deal with every agency uh, on their own, you yeah. know, independently. But nowadays, the uh, carriers are more into working with the network, and then the network works with the agencies. Yeah. So we're kind of that middle person between the carriers to the agencies. So, yeah, it's kind of evolved that way. But there's – I can't really think – I mean, if I could think of one, I'd tell you, but I can't think I can't of think any. Because they, they, they're – it's a quantum leap. They just – Boom! You're you're in the business, and and you're you're on your way. You don't have to struggle as much and and start up and go through all the costs because the networks help keep things at a minimum for the agencies. Right, and so it's probably the best way to get started in the insurance industry nowadays is to find a good network. And there's a lot of them out there. There's a lot of them. There are. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, that's what I was thinking. Like if I were going to start an agency, I'm like, why wouldn't I, um, you know, me being on the tech side, I'll speak to a lot of scratch agencies. Right. And I always push them towards an aggregator because they're, you know, a lot of their, um, you know, struggles in the beginning are finding appointments. Yes, it is. They can't get them. <laughs> no, they can't. And it's I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, if that's your struggle today, I think you, you need to go with an aggregator. Like you just yeah. need to do it. Um, yeah. But maybe, you know, if I'm putting myself in their shoes, maybe a lot of it's, um, you know, ego, like the fact that I'm not able to do this myself where, you know, cause a lot of business owners, right. Have, um, you know, they have, uh, they're prideful, right? They they want it, you know, they're starting this business themselves to be to crush it, to be able to have that freedom you're ch chatting about. Yes. So maybe sometimes it's an ego thing, but uh, but at the same time, it's like, you know, you got to do whatever you can in the beginning. <laughs> you do. You do. Because uh, you should be selling. In the first three years, it's all about selling. Like it you're is. a sales org and you should not... The, the finding appointments and everything like uh, that doesn't, uh, to be honest, it doesn't make your, your revenue. <laughs> right. And you get it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. 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 What do you, what do you think about that? Well, I, th I think that uh, you mean about like the ego and, and. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that might play a role into it? I don't it know. Could, it could play, you know, I guess I have spoken with some agents that they, uh, they, they say, well, depending on which way they want to join our organization, because we can, you can join as, as, as a network, just yeah. your network and keep your name and everything, or you can join as a Baldico agency through the full service side. But yeah, there are some people that will say, well, I've already got my agency established and I've got my yeah. name. And I don't want to change it. And mm -hmm. so then they just, they just, we just provide carriers for them. Yeah. And, and so it's a it's a different type of relationship that we have with those individuals. But yeah, I mean, there there are different things that could play in, but but I'd say maybe you're right that that could be one of them, just yeah, wanting to have your own thing and do your own. <laughs> but but it's really difficult. It's difficult. Yeah, I just had a I just had a carrier uh tell me not too long ago, yeah, that they were more interested in driving their agents toward a network than they were working with them directly. And, yeah. and I told him, I said, you know, you're playing into our hand. And he says, I know, but I don't care. It's the best relationship we can have to, to work with the networks and let them work with the agencies. Right. That makes, is, so, that makes yeah. so much sense. Like, yeah. you know, um, there, there, there needs to be a middleman at times because, um, you know, uh, agents, need to talk to someone like you because you're going to have all those relationships for them yeah. um, and get that done for them. You know, if, if they're, you know, having, if they have 30, 40 carriers, I don't know, I'm just saying, um, mm -hmm. and they have 30, 40 reps that, you know, got to maintain a relationship with. I mean, that's, that's tough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and, that's and, really hard. And, and it's, it's hard to understand a lot of times how the industry, you know, how to run an agency and everything. And, and that's why, uh, with Kyle Kemp, you mentioned Kyle yeah. earlier. Kyle is very instrumental in helping us set up uh, uh, training mm -hmm. because so many times we just 
bring numbers on and people are seeking training. So Kyle's, Kyle's been very busy and we're just getting ready to have our first training session for our agents because we feel that uh, there's a true need to educate people on how to truly uh, build their own agency and, and yeah. lifestyle and everything. So yeah, we're getting ready to implement that uh, this week and we'll have our first training session then in June. So that's a, that's another value that, that needs to be uh, shared with, with, new people in the business is they need the training. They need to. Yeah. Oh, 100%. How Mm -hmm. do you, um, how does technology fit in there? So again, that, you know, this, uh, podcast is typically around technology, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm not going to lie. This industry is extremely slow in adopting technology. Mm -hmm. And and it's like really, really slow. (laughs) Um, And there's, listen, you know, I've talked to agents, you know, some tell me they're like, Danny, listen, like this is solutions great, but I've gotten to 80 million in premium without it. And that argument is fine. Don't get me wrong. Because we're thinking in the now. Yeah. But what we're not thinking is our new buyer that's going to come around how they expect to do business, right? And so, yeah, today it might not affect, you know, that that agency I'm I'm referencing here, but there's going to come in time where there's going to be this huge wave and how they expect to just do business, everything. And they're not prepared. They're going to lose business. And, you know, the larger agencies, you know, they start to do these things. They start to adopt these, these practices and, you know, to your comment earlier, like, you know, these larger orgs are just gobbling agencies up. Yeah, <laughs> so it's going to get, get top heavy, right? The technology is going to be here for the larger orgs and the smaller are going to still hit, stay there. So yeah. like, what do you do when it comes to uh, technology? Is that part of the training? Oh, yeah. 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 We, we're constantly changing and seeking out the next best technology to be used in the industry because we know that there's a whole generation of savvy individuals that understand the technology that's being developed. They understand it better than I ever will. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so, so uh, we are constantly speaking with the individuals that understand technology and then we're evolving and changing ours constantly. That's just like, you know, I mean, just as simple as when I started out in the industry, you had a file for every person. You had a file cabinet and you put it in. Right. There. Well, that's all gone. That's all gone. And I right. can't imagine ever going back to that. So when people say that, you know, they've gotten to where they're going to be, they've gotten to where they're at and they never did use any of it. Well, yes, that is true. You did get to where you're at. But where could you be if you right. used it? Where could you be? Because right. technology allows us to do so much more. And right. so we do everything from our uh, uh, quoting, our our agency management system that keeps all the clients and the files in there. You yep. take into consideration the way that you communicate nowadays through social media. Uh, the phones are just wonderful nowadays. I mean, people right. can get a hold of people anytime. And if they don't want to call them, uh, the text messaging and everything works wonderfully yep. in in what we do we're even now we're we're getting ready to invest in uh in uh in bots so we have we have information that needs to be brought down from the carriers constantly every day and and we physically hire people who come in through those eight hours a day and and bring that information into our system wow so they That's now a have a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. now have the capability of training a laptop computer to do that 24 seven. Wow. All the time. And so awesome. when you come in of a morning, it's already there. Now, do we replace people? No, we don't replace people. We find other things for those people to do. But, Good but point. as, as technology comes into play, it's important to stay on top of it. I, I am a firm believer in it and constantly looking, looking yeah. for the next best way to use technology. Jerry, I, I'm on the front lines. I talk to, again, a boatload of agencies every day. 
and it mm. baffles me. Okay. When someone says um, they have a staff member, that's just reactive. All yeah. they do is just pick up the phone the day. Now yeah. I, I'm not going to lie. My wife, she's a dentist. She's got six front desk staff. They're just mm. answering the phone because it, you know, that's how it is. But we need to ask ourselves these questions, right? Yeah. As Americans, we always expect more. Yeah. <laughs> we expect we higher do. paying jobs and you know all that. Um, so we need to give people higher level work. Yes. And we need to ask ourselves, you know, I, I was on the phone with this guy the other day. He's like, ah, oh, well, I got my staff doing, you know, you know, uh, answering calls all the time for documents and everything. I'm like, I'm like, John. <laughs> I just yeah. made up the name, by the way. Like, John. <laughs> Think about if you took that employee and you put them in a position to maybe have more of a cross-selling role. Maybe in the the in, they you mapped out your data, you right. saw these opportunities to cross-sell, and that became their role. They're doing higher level work. Yes. They feel more valued, and you yes. don't have this high churn. Exactly. It's a cycle. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, and, and that's what technology does. Yes. And, and, and it also eventually drives their wages up because you can hire the technology for less money. So, <laughs> yeah. so if you can get the technology for less money, that leaves more money to share among the employees you have within your, your organization, you right. know? And, and so uh, it's, it's, it, there's a value there. Uh, and, and our employees here see it that way, that if we add technology, it's not going to take away from what they do. It's going to it's going to save us some money that we would have spent in the future that right. they can earn more because our goal is to try to get our employees earning as much as possible. Yeah. Amen to that. <laughs> and let's yeah. uh, let's veer into what you were saying, though. You know, our third point, mm -hmm. uh, you know, retirement is like no other. I know I, I had mentioned my the independent agency in Westlake that, you know, got acquired and, you know, they yeah. get residual, but um, yeah. Tell us a little bit more about like what you typically see. Yeah. Um, I always, I always tell young people who are getting into the industry that it's not about, it's not about accumulating and, and building an agency for a big pot full of money just to sell it and get out and live off of that that sum of money. It's about creating a vehicle that will pay you a, a very good wage yep. in your retirement till the day you die. So yeah. it's not about a big pot of money. It's about having, having revenue till the day we die because so many people, when they sell their businesses, they sell them for a lump sum of money. Well, then they live too long. And they run out of money because the, the money doesn't pay them as much as what they're used to getting until the day they die. So they spend all that money. So right. I always tell individuals who get into the industry that you just need to perpetuate the business. And it doesn't really I've even told I've told older people that are getting ready down the road to retire. I tell yeah. them, I say, you know, don't sell your agency. Bring in a new person bring in a young person and, yep. and build, build them into the business and right. then when you get ready to retire, continue to take a certain wage, maybe not as much as what you normally did, but pay that person well. And you still can have income out of the agency till your time is gone and then right. work something out where that new person receives it. Right. Because all you're really looking for is to be able to live your life out financially. Yeah. And yeah. so the new person takes over the agency and, mm -hmm. and a young person getting into the industry could have that luxury of spending a career building the agency. And, and if, if you build it up to, well, if you built it up to 5 million, you'd, you'd be looking at maybe $700,000 a year coming in to that okay. individual. Right. And so right. they can take that money, hire somebody else and still have revenue coming to them. And then, like I say, work out a deal where the young person is rewarded when you're done. Don't, I mean, I, I've talked to a lot of people and there's a lot of, there's some, there's some stingy agency owners out there. <laughs> <laughs> they are. And, and I always tell them it's, it's not 
being stingy. If you give a little, it'll it'll pay the uh, dividends to you. But oh well, my goodness, they, I mean, they, they hold on to those agencies and they don't want to give much of it away. I mean, Lincoln's turning blue. They hold him so tight in that penny, you know. That was so. great, Jerry. That 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 uh, that comment made my day. Uh. <laughs> Oh man, that was great. Uh, no, I mean, I, I completely agree. I'm, I'm like, personally, my wife and I talk about this all the time. Like, you know, I learned from my parents. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents have been very fortunate in their life. Um, but you know, they, they don't have any income after. Right. And, yeah, exactly. um, and, and just learning through that of like, Hey, you know, if it's not insurance, which insurance is a wonderful option, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Find something else. Well, right. you know, you, you know, if your route is real estate, um, you know, uh, if, if you're big time stock market, I know my dad yeah. is, it's like crazy in it, uh -huh. <laughs> but uh -huh. if you figure out all these other ways, like you need to figure out ways to get some residual, um, because you're right. What if something happens, you, you lose a large lump sum of, a uh, large, uh, lump sum of cash. Yeah. Um, and you don't have anything else coming in. Now you're, you're like, well, what do I do? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And and there's no guarantees of anywhere that you ever put that money. If you yeah. get that one large sum, sum, I mean, the insurance industry pretty well continues. I mean, it hasn't been it, messed over yet. It will always <laughs> during COVID. I can attest. Uh, I was over yes. again at agency Zoom during that time. Mm -hmm. Nothing really changed for insurance. People yeah. are still people need insurance. <laughs> yeah, and, and everyone does. And whatever, uh, what other industry can you be in where where in inflation plays in the favor of the owner? Yeah, I mean, that's wild, right? If you look at <laughs> if you look at insurance premiums over the last two years, they've gone up twenty plus percent. That's wild. For the last two years, and so every agent that owns an agency, their revenues are growing even yeah. though they haven't added any new customers. And, and I, I feel badly for the consumers because I know it's really bad. It's tough. It's yeah. not easy to afford all the insurance out there at what it costs today. But for the agents there, it's, it's a beautiful thing for the agents, but yeah, it the is. agents aren't even in control of it. They don't even they yeah. care to do that based on regulations with their States and everything. Yeah. They have to apply for the rate increases. And so when it's awarded, the agents benefit from it. Yeah, they do. I can attest the agency I was working with. He's like, oh, we have the same amount of clients, but a revenue went up. <laughs> revenue went up. <laughs> and that's I was right. like, that's right. Well, I was like, hell yeah, Bob, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's keep building on that, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, Jerry, dude, this has been a great conversation. I always like to keep these uh, condensed because, you know, uh, yep. and our listeners probably listen to like 25, 35 minutes, right? Yeah. And this was a wonderful conversation. And I truly do uh, think the listeners uh, got a lot out of this. And, you know, if you're a younger uh, individual out there, you're trying to figure out what you want to do. Why not start your own business, yep. start your own agency and and go with Old Eco, man? Like they, they have the structure for you. They're going to show you how it's done. I mean... To me, it's an absolute no brainer. <laughs> uh, but Jerry, how um, if anyone wanted to get a hold of you, how would they they reach you? They can actually reach me on my uh, cell phone directly if they would like. Awesome. Uh, I can provide that number. It's uh, 812-871-7003. Uh, or they can contact me at uh, letter J Balmer at valdico.com if if you go out to the website valdico uh you'll find me out there you'll find awesome. me and Thanks. they can reach out email me call me whatever um young people wanting to get into the business like i tell a lot of them they don't have to do business with us for me to help them i'll be glad to talk to them and i'll, I'll if they just got questions i'll just help them out that's a lot that's awesome that's awesome yeah well guys reach out to jerry <laughs> Hit him up. Uh, no. So, Jerry, I do always like to close out, uh, you know, with this. You know, I typically ask my guests, um, you know, give us two to three technology vendors that you feel like, you know, agents should 
check out. I know you're in a different viewpoint because you probably evaluate a bunch of tech out there. And if you don't have more than two or three, don't worry. It's just we can just chat maybe about one. So no, I just hit you with that randomly. <laughs> no, no, the, the one that we use and I really uh -huh. believe strongly in it's it's applied. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we use applied and I think it's a great tool uh, for technology. You uh, we're on we're on their epic system epic yep yes we're on epic and then uh, uh, oh i can't i can't think my my coo has the name of the uh the company that uh that do the bots and i can't think what the vendor is for that one in particular bots. But, yeah, but it, more like RPA going in and yeah, yeah. what you were talking about earlier with mm -hmm. reading, making sure data gets in there. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. I yep. think it's a, a good piece of technology and 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 just any sort of, I mean, I don't know who, who all they would be, but I think that in this industry, I think communication is so important. So I yeah. would I would be looking for some sort of a vendor that, that helps enhance communication between uh agents to customers and, and those sort of things. But Good point. Yeah. yeah, I would, uh, guys, you know, you need to change the way you speak with your clients. Mm -hmm. you, instead of when they just call in your chat with them, you know, I hear all the time, Danny, we would like them to call us. Mm -hmm. That needs to change. When they call you, it should be they're in need. But yes. when they're calling you for something simple, that actually be should be something they could do themselves. You need to be proactive in how you communicate. Yes. And that's a good point. So thank you for saying, you know, so guys, there's, you know, technologies out there, you know, like a CRM. Um, you know, I know management system have, um, you know, some communication com uh, abilities, but it depends on what your needs are. Every uh, business is different, but that's a good point. But take control of being proactive to how you reach out to your clients. Don't just let them call you guys. Please don't. Like I, I'm, I'm tired of listening to agencies tell me that because that's that's not how we should run a business. No. Um, that's that's not how we should do it at all. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, but Jerry, you're the man. Um, everything Kyle said about you, I can you know now our listeners know on here. <laughs> uh, and, and thanks for discussing your journey. Uh, I, I know we could all feel, you know, why you're doing what you're doing today and, and running us through how uh, Voldico provides value to agencies who, you know, are, are starting out or, you know, already has an established agency. Um, thanks for coming, man. Oh, thank you, Danny. I appreciate the time. You've been yeah. a pleasure. Awesome. Well, guys, at the end of the day, we discuss indie tech how it'll help your agency. So thanks for listening and catch you on the next episode. Peace.